Hello again, everybody. I'm Ed Robinson, and welcome to another exciting edition of Extra Bass Hit. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the world of Major League Baseball. Coming up on this edition of the program, we'll preview the American League and National League Championship Series. But first, I'd like to give my top three storylines. I want to start off talking about the month of October. When you think of the month of October, fall is in the air. The weather gets cooler. Oh, and yeah, the baseball it gets hot and memories are made. We have seen some games and we have seen some players take off like a rocket and then some. Example, nothing like October baseball. We saw excitement in the clinching game in this year's American League Division Series between the Detroit Tigers and the Cleveland Guardians. We saw Lane Thomas hit a Grand Slam home run to seal the deal for the Guardians. We also saw the New York Mets coming up big in a surprise win over the Philadelphia Phillies. We talk about the Guardians coming from behind to win their series, beating the Detroit Tigers. The New York Mets, I guess you could say the new Miracle Mets, right? With the likes of Francisco Lindor coming up big in the series. Also in the other National League series, the Los Angeles Dodgers taking care of business, beating the San Diego Padres in a thrilling game. That was what a thrilling series that was. We'll recap that series in just a little bit. But man, October baseball, nothing like it. And then the Bronx Bombers, the New York Yankees handling their business, beating the Kansas City Royals in five games. So this is what it's all about. It's all about moments. It's all about memories. It's all about excitement. It's all about the drama. And I tell you what, the drama is just nothing like it in Major League Baseball, especially in the month of October. The month of October is already a busy month in sports with the NFL heating up, the NBA season getting underway, the NHL season also getting underway as well in Major League Baseball and the moments that are made in the month of October. It's truly nothing like it. And we've seen so many great things happen. And we are, I I firmly believe we're destined for more things to come as this playoff season, this postseason continues in Major League Baseball. My next storyline is going to be the New York Mets. The New York Mets, you talk about a roller coaster of a year The months of April and May were rough for them. At the beginning of June, Francisco Lindor had a players-only meeting, said, look, we got to get our stuff together. We can do this. And guess what? Since the month of June, the New York Mets have had the best record in the major leagues. And then just before, right on the final day of the regular season, they clinched a playoff berth beating the Atlanta Braves in the first game of a doubleheader. And they have continued to ride that momentum and they have never looked back. The Mets handling their business in the National League Division Series against the Philadelphia Phillies. I don't think a lot of people expected this. The Phillies were coming in, had the hitters, had the better pitching rotation. But it's nothing like October where you can have a reversal of fortune And certainly the Mets, man, you talk about having just clutch moments. Pete Alonso handling his business, hitting that home run to clinch that series against the Milwaukee Brewers. And Francisco Lindor coming in, hitting a clutch home run to send the Phillies home and to eliminate them. This is the new Miracle Mets, and certainly the Mets have so much momentum continuing in this postseason. Yeah, the Yankees, they handled their business. They're on their way to the next round. But, man, the Mets, what can you say about them, man? The Mets have just, they've, they've been a fun story this year. The Yankees may be the bigger brand, but the Mets are really the better story. When you've got guys like Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonzo, Mark Vientos has really become a star in his own right in this postseason. 
First year manager, Carlos Mendoza. Great job he's done so far. The ownership, Steve Cohen. I mean, the Mets are locked. They've been locked in since the month of June, and they are continuing to be locked in in this monumental run. And certainly, I mean, the sky is not the limit for the Mets because they continue to soar and continue to soar to new heights and continue to get past the pressure. And when it's been on the money, they have delivered and then some. So the New York Mets... Watch out for them because I think some more memories and more moments are going to be made in this next series that they have coming up. My last storyline is going to be the Los Angeles Dodgers. So with the Dodgers having the biggest payroll in Major League Baseball, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts and company, expectations extremely high. And let's be real, this year is World Series or bust for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Shohei Otani signing that big contract in the offseason. All systems go for the Dodgers. The Dodgers posting the best record in the major leagues coming into this playoff series. Going up against the San Diego Padres. It went all five games in the National League Division Series. And these were some great games. There was some controversy in some of those games. The fans, Dodger fans, got a little rowdy with the Padre players. But, man, this was one heck of a series. And in the end, the Dodgers wind up pulling off the victory and would go on to to play the New York Mets in the National League Championship Series. But the Dodgers, hey, the hype during spring training and the hype during this season, hey, they're living up to it. Shohei Otani's played nice. Mookie Betts has played well. But how about T. Oscar Hernandez? T. Oscar delivered in that fifth and deciding game in the division series. And the fans at Dodger Stadium, they were in a frenzy when Hernandez hit that home run. Matter of fact, Dodger fans have been showing up for this whole series, really for this whole playoff run for the Dodgers. And man, the Dodgers, it was close because the Padres had them. The Padres, they brought their heat too with the likes of of Fernando Tatis Jr., Manny Machado, Jackson Merrill, also Yurikson Profar, Jay Cronenworth, just to name a few. But hey, the LA Dodgers came out on top. A tough fifth game, but they handled their business, and now they're on their way to the National League Championship Series to take on the New York Mets. So the Dodgers, a lot of hype this year. So far, they're living it, living up to it. But again, this is a World Series of bust season. Dave Roberts, he knows he's got the talent, but now they have to go out and deliver because they've got a. They're going to be going up against a team that is just thriving off of emotion, thriving off of the moment right now. I mean, they're riding such a momentum right now. And the Mets, they've got a lot to say. But, man, the Dodgers, the Dodger faithful, they showed up for the series against the Padres. And I know they're going to show up very proud. And they're going to be in heavy support for their Dodgers going up against the New York Mets. All right, that takes care of that. Now it's time to recap the American League Division Series and the National League Division Series. Let's start off with the American League Division Series, where we have the New York Yankees going up against the Kansas City Royals. In Game 1, the Yankees handled their business in a close one, beating the Royals 6-5. to five. The winning pitcher was Clay Holmes, and the losing pitcher was Michael Lorenzen. And getting the save was Luke Weaver. Hitting a home run for the Yankees was Glaber Torres, and for the Royals, MJ Melendez. Game two, the Royals would strike back, tying the series at one game apiece, with the Royals winning 4-2. The winning pitcher for the Royals was Angel Zerpa, and the losing pitcher was Carlos Rodon, and getting the save was Lucas Ursek. Meanwhile, hitting home runs for the Royals was Salvador Perez, and for the Yankees, Chaz Chisholm Jr. We move ahead to game three and the series shifted to Kansas City at a raucous crowd at Kauffman Stadium. Close game, but the Yankees would hold on to win 
three to two. Hitting a home run for the Yankees was Giancarlo Stanton. And the winning pitcher for the Yankees was Tommy Canley. And the losing pitcher was Chris Bubich. And getting the save was Luke Weaver. Game four, elimination game for Kansas City. It was a close one, but the Yankees would hold on to win three to one. The winning pitcher for the Yankees was Garrett Cole. The losing pitcher was Michael Waka. And getting the save was Luke Weaver. So the Yankees eliminate the Royals. They win the series three games to one and move on to the American League Championship Series. And then in the other American League Division Series, Game 1 between the Cleveland Guardians and the Detroit Tigers. Game 1 was a shutout for Cleveland. They would beat Detroit 7 to nothing. The winning pitcher was Cade Smith, and the losing pitcher was Tyler Holton. And the getting the home run for Cleveland was Lane Thomas. We move ahead to Game 2. Detroit would come back, would shut out Cleveland in Game 2, 3 to nothing. The winning pitcher was Will Vest. The losing pitcher was Emmanuel Classe. And getting the save was Bo Brisk. And hitting a home run for Detroit, Kerry Carpenter. We move ahead now to Game 3 with a series shifting to Detroit. Detroit shuts out Cleveland, 3 to nothing. The winning pitcher was Brant Herter. The losing pitcher was Alex Cobb. And getting the save was Tyler Holton. We move ahead to game four, and this was a close one, and it went down to the wire, but Cleveland would hold on to win five to four. The winning pitcher for the Guardians was Hunter Gaddis. The losing pitcher was Bo Brisk, and getting the save was Emmanuel Classe. Hitting home runs for Cleveland, Jose Ramirez and David Fry. And hitting a home run for Detroit, Zach McKinstry. So we had the deciding game five. And you talk about drama in this one. Cleveland's turn to bet. Everything changed for the better when Guardians player Lane Thomas hit a grand slam home run to seal the deal for the Guardians, giving them the victory and the series win. The Guardians would win 7-3. to three. The winning pitcher for Cleveland was Tim Heron. The losing pitcher for Detroit, Tarek Skubal. And getting the save, Emmanuel Classe. So again, Cleveland would win the deciding game five, seven to three. So it will be the Cleveland Guardians going up against the New York Yankees in the American League Championship Series. We move ahead now to the National League Division Series. And ha, you talk about a drama-filled series. Really, both of these series were outstanding. But the first series we'll recap is the Los Angeles Dodgers going up against the San Diego Padres. Tough first game at Dodger Stadium, but the Dodgers would win 7-5. to five. The winning pitcher for Los Angeles, Ryan Brazier. The losing pitcher was Adrian Morahan. And getting the save was Blake Trinan. And hitting home runs for San Diego, Manny Machado. And for the Dodgers, Shohei Otani. We move ahead to game two. It was never close. San Diego brought the offense and brought the hot bats with them. San Diego would win 10-2. to two. The winning pitcher for the Padres, Yu Darvish. The losing pitcher, Jack Flaherty. Hitting home runs in his game for San Diego, Fernando Tatis Jr., he would hit two home runs, followed by David Peralta, Jackson Merrill, Xander Bogarts, and Kyle Higashioka, and hitting a home run for the Dodgers, Max Muncy. We move ahead to Game 3 with the series shifting to San Diego. This was a close contest. San Diego would hold on to win 6-5. to five. The winning pitcher was Michael King. The losing pitcher was... Walker Bueller, getting the save, Robert Suarez, hitting home runs for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts and Teoscar Hernandez, and hitting a home run for San Diego, Fernando Tatis Jr. The series remains in San Diego for game four. This was never close. This was all Dodgers shutting out the Padres eight to nothing. The winning pitcher was Evan Phillips and the losing pitcher, Dylan Cease. 
and hitting home runs for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts, Will Smith, and Gavin Lux. And we had the deciding Game 5 between the Padres and the Dodgers with the, with the series shifting back to L.A. and Dodger Stadium. This was a close game. However, Kike Hernandez and T. Oscar Hernandez both nailed home runs for the Dodgers to seal the victory and the series for L.A. Dodgers would win 2 to nothing. The winning pitcher for Los Angeles, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. The losing pitcher, Yu Darvish. And getting the save, Blake Trinan. So the Dodgers take the series and move on to the National League Championship Series. And then we had the other National League Division Series matchup with the Philadelphia Phillies going up against the New York Mets. Game one belonged to the Mets. New York would win 6-2. to two. The winning pitcher was Reed Garrett, and the losing pitcher was Jeff Hoffman. Hitting a home run for the Phillies, Kyle Schwarber. Game two belonged to the Phillies. This was a nail-biter. Phillies win 7-6. to six. The winning pitcher, Jeff Hoffman. The losing pitcher, Tyler McGill. Hitting home runs for the Mets, Mark Vientos. He hit two. Pete Alonzo and Brandon Nimmo also hit home runs. For the Phillies, Bryce Harper, he would hit a home run. And Nick Castellanos hit the game-winning home run in the ninth inning to give the Phillies a 7-6 win. So the series shifts to New York for Game 3. And the Mets brought the bats, and Sean Manaya brought the heat on the mound. The Mets win 7-2. The winning pitcher was Sean Manaya, and the losing pitcher, Aaron Nola. And hitting home runs for the Mets, Pete Alonzo and Jesse Winker. And then we had Game 4. Phillies, they had it sewed up, up until the Mets being on offense, Francisco Lindor in the bottom of the sixth inning would hit a home run. Never look back. Lindor's grand slam home run would give the Mets a 4-1 to lead, and they would give them the victory. Mets again would win 4-1. to The winning pitcher, David Peterson. The losing pitcher, Jeff Hoffman. And getting the save, Edwin Diaz. So the Mets eliminate the Phillies, and that sets the stage for the National League Championship Series between the New York Mets and the Los Angeles Dodgers. All right, now it's time to preview the American League Championship Series. So in the American League Championship Series, we have the Cleveland Guardians going up against the New York Yankees. So for the Guardians, we've got Jose Ramirez, we've got Stephen Kwan, we've got David Fry, we, listen, man, we've got some some solid hitters on this uh, Guardians roster. Also, you got Andres Jimenez that brings the defense as well. As far as the rotation is concerned, Alex Cobb, just to name a few, they're bringing the heat. And when you think about Emmanuel Classe, one of the best in the business when it comes to closing games, being one of the best closing pitchers in the league, I mean, he brings the heat unlike any other. And there, not only will he be put to the test, but the Guardians' bats will be put to the test as well going up against the Yankees. Everybody talks about Shohei Otani, and what a landmark year that Shohei had. But Aaron Judge had a landmark year as well. And we, we talked about the other New York team with the Mets, being the better story but the Yankees are the bigger brand and when you have the likes of an Aaron Judge you can't go wrong but also a Giancarlo Stanton you've also got a Jazz Chisholm Jr. Glaber Torres and company the only thing that's going to get me with this series is the Yankees rotation This is going to be something that's that's going to be interesting. I think this is going to come down to the Yankees pitching going up against Cleveland's hitting. Cleveland, they've been bringing the bat most of this playoff run, led by Jose Ramirez and also Stephen Kwan, David Fry and company. This is going to be a very close series. 
I feel this is going to go seven. I think this is going to be an outstanding series. I don't think people are going to give it enough credit because of what the Mets and the Dodgers are going to do. I'll get into them in just a little bit, but Guardians and Yankees, I feel this is going to go seven. I like the Yankees to win in seven. I feel that they've got Aaron Judge is, is I think Aaron Judge is really going to bring some big numbers in this series. I think this is the series where we're really going to see Judge and Stanton really get theirs in this series. I really feel that they're going to the Bronx Bombers are going to go and make some noise on Cleveland. They're going to give Cleveland's pitching fits in this series. So in seven games, I like the Yankees to beat the Guardians. And then we have the National League Championship Series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Mets. I am pumped about this series. I think, this, well, I don't think, I well, I think the series, this series between the Dodgers and the Mets, this is going to steal the show. I really feel that this is going to, this series is going to have plenty of highlights and really few lowlights. When you think of Los Angeles and New York, Dodgers, Yankees, but also Dodgers, Mets as well. And I mentioned some of the of the, the key players for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, also Gavin Lux, Max Muncie, and of course Shohei Otani, who most likely will win the National League MVP. And I mean, you got Walker Bueller. Uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, you've got a lot of these plays in T. Oscar Hernandez. I'm, I mean, the Dodgers, they had a one exciting series against the San Diego Padres, their in-state rival in California. As much fun as the Dodgers have been during the regular season, the Mets have just been the feel-good story of the playoffs. Since the month of June, the, the Mets have turned their act around and then some and then get clinching that playoff berth on the final day of the regular season, beating the Atlanta Braves and then going into the playoff run with a, a thrilling victory over the Milwaukee Brewers going to the next round and then upsetting the Philadelphia Phillies. This Mets story is so much fun. Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonzo. Oh, how about Mark Vientos? Mark Vientos, I mean, he has really had a playoffs for the ages. He has been really effective. Brandon Nimmo's been good as well. Jesse Winker's had some good hits as well. Dodgers Mets. I mean, the Dodgers on paper, really good. The best record during the regular season. But the Mets, man, the Mets just have so much of a momentum and the story is just beautiful. I, I think I don't think I know this series is going to go seven games and I like the Mets to win in seven games. And I believe that's going to set the stage. My pick for the World Series, we're going to have a subway series, New York Yankees, New York Mets. And that's it. And that's going to do it for another exciting edition of the program. But before we let you go, just had some uh, sad news to pass along to you in the world of baseball. Pitcher Louis Tiant has passed away at the age of 83. Tiant was inducted into the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame in 1997. During his time in the major leagues, he was a three-time All-Star. And he played for the Boston Red Sox and also playing for the Cleveland Indians the Minnesota Twins, the New York Yankees, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the California Angels. Tiot was a native of Cuba, and also there's the interesting story about Louis was that his dad played in the Negro Leagues for the New York Cubans. And Louis Tiot, during his after his playing career had ended, he worked for the Boston Red Sox. But again, Louis Tiot passes away at the age of 83. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.